there is a lot of the news, uh, not the least of which is that Walmart is allowing unionization in South Africa. That was the deal they had to make with South Africa to like, get into the country. Same with Brazil. Same with Argentina. Yeah, you can have a Walmart here if you uh, let your employees unionize. What's wrong with us? And we are in a fourth war in, in the Middle East. We are now dropping drone bombs in, in, um, in Syria. In Yemen, excuse me. Mix up my Middle Eastern countries in Yemen. And in the midst of this, Tim Pawlenty has come out with his new tax program. He wants to cut the top individual tax rate, which right now stands at, if my recollection is correct, 36%. Cut it down to 25%. That's for the millionaires and billionaires. He wants to uh, have only two income tax brackets, 10% and 25%. He wants to eliminate all taxation on capital gains, dividends, and estates. So basically, Paris Hilton will pay no taxes whatsoever for the rest of her life, nor will her children, should she ever have any. And he wants to cut the corporate tax rate down to 15%, which is actually above what corporations in America typically pay. We may have the highest tax rates in the world, but we have the second lowest tax collections in the OECD, in the developed countries of the world, from our corporations. So, you know, Palenti wants to make it even worse. I, you know, it's, in fact, he says American business today pay the second highest tax rates in the world. It's simply not true. David Selleck is with us. TrueTaxHelp.com is his website. He's a conservative commentator and federal tax practitioner and advocate, a contributor with Fox News. David, welcome back to the program. Hey, thank you for having me, Tom. As always, it's a real pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Tim Pawlenty wants to cut taxes on millionaires and billionaires by $7.8 billion. He wants to maintain the Bush tax cuts. That's another two and a half, excuse me, $7.8 trillion. He wants to maintain the Bush tax cuts. That's another $2.5 trillion. We're talking about 10.3, if I'm doing my math right in my head, $10.3 trillion that that Tim Pawlenty wants to give to millionaires and billionaires, and that doesn't even begin to get into what he's going to give to corporations. How how does this make a how does this make any economic sense? And b how does he think he is going to sell this to the American people? I mean, I understand the millionaires and billionaires will give him a lot of money, and he'll run a lot of campaign ads talking about how wonderful he and his family are. But do you think that he can buffalo the American people the way that conservatives have in the past? when they ran on things like family values and then, you know, Scott Walker and then and Rick Snyder, and then as soon as they get into office, they they basically go, you know, pass out as much money as they can to rich people and screw average working people? Yeah, that's a very interesting point that you raised. And, uh, you know, hope springs eternal. But if I could just address the tax uh, component of it first, and I'll leave the other conjecture to you because you know more about the individuals and I guess their their particular medal when they do when they get to office. As far as his giving these things to these so-called millionaires or billionaires, he's actually not giving anything. In fact, what they're doing is taking less. See, right now, I am of the firm opinion that companies, corporations, and individuals pay entirely too much tax, and anything to reduce that burden I will be for. After giving a cursory review to Palente's plan, uh, my feeling is it does not go far enough. There are significant changes that need to be taken, particularly the rules that govern charitable giving. Uh, charitable giving right now is really under attack in America, and what is happening, unfortunately, is the government is picking up the slack. If we would just make a slight amendment uh, to Internal Revenue Publication 526 and allow individuals to write off charitable contributions above the line, 100% deduction, the, I figure if we could allow uh, conservatively, uh, we would save approximately $810 billion a year and over about a 60-month period, uh, we could probably lower our deficit by as much as $1 trillion dollars. So you're you're asserting if if I if I can read between the lines of what you just said that if we allowed millionaires and billionaires to take a straight on tax deduction for every every dollar that they give to a homeless person or a hungry person or a 
uh, a, a pregnant uh, teenager or whatever, then the government no longer has to do it. And, you know, we'll all get all of our charity from the millionaires and billionaires among us and everything will be good. Uh, I think that's an oversimplification, but... It is the essence of what at, you're saying, isn't it? Well, if you look at the governmental apparatus when they fund programs, we lose about 50 cents on every dollar in administrative costs. In even if the government uh, allows individuals to bid to provide services, David, you so know that uh, that that may be true when you're talking about the government, as has happened in large part since the Reagan administration. The government hiring private for-profit or even private not-for-profit corporations to administer block grants and to administer funds that they pass out. But when the government does it itself, the total overhead cost of Social Security is 3%. The overhead cost of Medicare is 3.5%. The the overhead costs of, uh, when you look at overhead costs of most police and fire departments, are around 45 to 5%. The government is, at the overhead cost of the military even, which is an obscenely wasteful, is is well under 10%. These these you know the government can actually do things well, but let me get to a to another point. You said that, but by giving ten trillion dollars in tax breaks to billionaires, millionaires, well, it, we haven't even gotten to the corporate part of it. To giving it to millions and billionaires, we're not actually giving it to them. We're taking less. Let me ask you a question: yes, If sir. if you go into a McDonald's and you walk up to the counter and you say, "I'll have a Big Mac and fries and a, and a Coke," and the person hands it to you and you open the Big Mac and you take a bite out of it and stuff a couple of French fries in your face. And then the person says, that'll be, th you know, how are, I, I, I haven't been in a McDonald's literally in 30 years, so I have no idea what it costs. But let's say that the person says, uh, that'll be $4. And you say, well, I'm not going to give you that $4. Is that a okay. legitimate uh, transaction? You know, almost the identical uh, fact pattern happened to me yesterday on the Long Island Railroad. Uh, an individual refused to pay for his ticket. He had the money to pay, but there was a, a confrontation between him and the ticket collector, and he ended up being arrested. So I don't think it is a fair comparison. Okay, so, so is, if the, millionaires the and billionaires are using late. our court system to make their money, they're using our, our financial system to have the stability of the money, they're using our... our, our FAA for their private jets. They're using our roads. They're using well, they're Tom, using the they're infrastructure not, of America. Why should they not are. pay for it? They do pay for it, Tom. And I have to remind you that they pay significantly more. I would assert that they don't pay anything close to what they should, or our infrastructure would not be sure. crumbling. Well, I don't think that's true. I think you can look at the crumbling infrastructure to gross mismanagement and individuals who have gone into public office who have the, perhaps the business and, and financial and economic acumen of a wood tick. Yeah, well, problem. if you're talking about George Bush or uh, Ronald Reagan, I'm absolutely with you, David. I think we finally found something that we can we can oh, agree on. <laughs> David David Selig, uh, truetaxhelp.com is the website. Conservative commentator, federal tax practitioner, and advocate, Fox News contributor. Okay, I get it. You didn't mean to pick on George Bush and Ronald Reagan, did you? Thank you very much, okay. Tom. It was I, I, a pleasure. Your correction is noted. David, uh, thanks for being with us. Good talking with you. All right, so how, is Tim Pawlenty going to get away with this?